Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Riffing on John Murphy Sunset. And I'm uh, not sure all of that's going to be in the title, but uh, you get the idea. Anyway, uh, I did this painting about uh, a couple weeks back. Uh, I already put up the uh, the Georgia Ness uh, when I had done uh, around that same time and uh, um, really stoked. In fact, I almost accidentally, uh, I did delete this and uh, fortunately I remembered in time before I emptied out the uh, recycle bin on, on my computer because uh, I think it's really cool and I think you're really going to enjoy watching it. And... Um, we're working on some MDF right now, and uh, now I prepped it with some transparent gesso, and so it was like MDF colored, kind of cream colored, and I just kind of rubbed some uh, raw umber acrylic paint over the top. That's that texture of y you see. That's a good technique. It's it's kind of neat because it gets something on the board. You know, it's not just a plain surface, but not that I'm overly intimidated by that anyway. But I, I could see how that could be for some people. Uh, bit of an issue so uh you know kind of a neat idea too i've done this uh, this uh you know sort of board prep uh for my figurative things which i don't really do much on this channel and i don't really paint a lot of figurative stuff anyway but um so we are uh doing our underpainting with uh it's uh, it looks like a burn number and a lizard crimson and i've really been big on that and i i often throw in a little tiny bit of uh, perylene green too just to give me a little extra complexity in there and uh I like, I want some complexity, but I don't want muddiness, okay, so uh, Burnt Umber is transparent, a Lizard Crimson's transparent, and uh, Perylene uh, Black slash Green is transparent, so that's good. I don't need a lot of opacity. I was, uh, there was a painting, and the painting turned out really great, but uh, it was a bit of a struggle um, about uh, one, uh, two, three weeks ago where I had uh, I had read in a book that uh, Norman Rockwell was into using Mars Violet for his underpaintings, and I got oh Mars Violet, and I really love Mars Violet, but it's so opaque it doesn't work as an underpainting color. The exception would be say if it was dry. Um, okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about John Murphy. Uh, you can you can find a playlist uh, for for good old John Murphy uh, in my little playlist area. He's one of my favorite tonalist painters. I've done several studies after the painting that I'm riffing on here. Uh, this is more like an informal, uh, you know, jam, so to speak. I've uh, I've changed the proportions of the uh, the painting to make it square. Uh, so we're just painting the main focal point uh, of his of his piece, and uh, it's one of my total favorite uh, paintings by John. Uh, uh, interestingly, I have a only a very small resolution um, version of it. I have no idea where the painting actually lives. I, I'm always trying to find some high resolution uh, John Francis Murphy images, but you know he's just not that popular. Uh, and I think, uh, as, as genius as some of his best work is, uh, when you, when you, you move down from the, the more genius stuff, you get to the, the pot boilers, uh, the stuff he did, um, uh, just for commercial reasons, and, uh, so it's all, all you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're okay paintings, but it's always a pawn in the foreground. Middle distance, a uh, strand of trees with a cottage or something. The sky is usually nothing to write home to mom about. And it looks like paintings he would put together pretty quickly and sell probably just to, you know. Uh, it, this is, it's covered a bit in the History of American Tonalism by David A. Cleveland, which is a great book. Uh, you can also find a review of that on this channel. And uh, you should definitely check that out. Get that book if you don't have it. Yeah, it's the only place you can learn about John, really. Um, I mean, there's a little bit online, but 
um, David A. Cleveland has done the deep dive, and his chapter is about as close as we're going to get to a book. What? Speaking of books, oh my gosh, that was a quick uh, study of a Murphy you saw on page two there. Yeah. Uh, and there's another little flash on a Murphy. So Murphy's a big influence on me, and uh, you know, second second only to George and S. I would say there's there's another study after a Murphy, several studies after Murphy in the book. And the thing is, like, I would love to do more uh, Murphy studies, but he has about uh, six or seven amazing paintings, and I've done studies after those. And this is one um, th that I'm riffing on here. And by riffing, it's kind of like uh, I've just grabbed my acoustic guitar and I'm <coughs> singing the song, you know. It's uh, scaled down. It's uh, a small format, uh, informal, and quickly done. But the heart of it's there. And if you're into tonalism, you're learning to, uh, about painting tonalism, this would be a good one to look at. And as a matter of fact, you can uh, definitely find the, uh, I think you can find the image online, but you're always welcome to reach out to me as well. I, uh, you just go to my website. My email's there. It's not hard to find. Say, hey, Mike, I'd love to make my own study after that uh, John Francis Murphy. I'll hook you up. I'll send you the reference image I've used. And... Uh, I'm sure I may do it again. What was neat is like I, I didn't have much interest in doing another straight up study of it. The, th the difference between this and a straight up study is a straight up study. I'm doing my best to, if he had a patch of green, I have a patch of green. If he had a patch of red, I got a patch of red. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but with a riffing, uh, it's like, man, uh, I don't feel like doing that. I'm going to do this and I'm done. I was thinking about that today, uh, too. I thought maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. And, uh, oh yeah, the book. Did, did I mention the book? It's $60 U.S. international shipping included. Lots of good information in there about tonalism. I don't think there is another book on painting tonally other than the one by Burge Harrison, who, uh, <clears throat> I was mentioning that uh, idea. That would kind of segue with what I want to talk about. So I had a, a little um, painting that I did. It was a little four by six, and it was, you know, coastal scene with a tree. That's the kind of thing that's really selling out here, and uh, which is fine. Uh, actually, quite challenging to paint those trees, the sinuous trees. Yeah, but anyway, I'm up for it. I'll do it. <clears throat> this one uh, I thought was a nice little painting, and uh, of course I knew it would sell, and it did sell uh, as soon as it got in the gallery. And uh, the, 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 the people that had uh, purchased it actually uh, contacted me. Sorry, I think the uh, wind blew open the gate. Anyway, they contacted me. They wanted to know a little bit about my, um, uh, my thoughts and motivations behind the painting. And, and I responded. And, uh, and then it was just four by six. It's tiny. So I thought, yeah, you know, it would be really interesting to do a six by eight of that same scene. And uh, so I did that yesterday. And I was, um, it's not often that I revisit a scene that immediately, like the uh, the other version was a, a month and a half ago, and here I am again with the uh, the same reference. I did flip it, and uh, funny enough, you know, I found it to be <laughs> challenging. It wasn't actually any easier to paint it again, uh, mostly because figuring out those trunks is always a thing. And as you move, as you scale up, uh, you have to wrangle with things more. Things have to be, you know, maybe you don't want to get delineated. And then there's the gene. That's the genius of someone like George Ness, who could do these really huge amorphous paintings, right? With almost no detail. It's just ch texture and shapes and color, you know. Which would be someplace I'd like to head. Anyway, um, talking about Burge Harrison, he had a brother named. Uh, Alexander and Alexander painted really amazing like um, seascapes and Alexander would would start with like uh, not this tiny but he would start with a very small painting and then he would uh, <coughs> paint the scene increasingly larger and that always struck me as being a pretty neat idea and so that was what was kind of in my mind too is like okay we're four by six and then we'll do six by eight and then uh, we'll do uh, who knows, 11 by 14, right? You would really want to make it a, a pretty significant jump. Oh, what's after that? Well, we'll go 1824, uh, you know, 20 by 30, 
30 by 40. You get it? You know? That's a neat idea. <coughs> right. We've latched the gate. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what I did. I did a 4 by 6 and then I did a 6 by 8 And will I keep going? I don't know. Because... Even though it was a challenge, I felt like hmm, the thing is I really enjoy painting the same scenes uh, again, but I usually like to have a, a bigger gap in time because what's interesting to me is, is when I've changed artistically or as a person, which is inevitable, right? You're always going to change and that change is often incremental and not noticeable over when, when looking at it through a brief time span but as you you know extend the time out you'll really notice and see that the differences to the point very interestingly uh, I I challenge you to to try and replicate one of your older works right you might think you can do it but you'll find that you can't you really can't you can't go back you know um, but here actually because uh, now that's not necessarily true sure maybe Depending on the kind of person you are, the kind of artist you are, you might be able to. There are painters that would do that, but even their their takes um, of Van Gogh, one of them, he did several different versions of some of his paintings, and they're different. It's going to be different because you're different, but it's going to be much different if you wait a while. Yeah, sorry, had to pause again. I'm a little stuffed up from the pollen that's going on out here. It's fall, too. I don't know what's up with that. Spring for most of you in the U.S., but fall, fall for me. Yeah. Uh, so, very interesting, you know. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't really, I mean, it, it would have been uh, more satisfying, I think, in my case, to just compose another photo that was similar and do that instead you know but um, you know walking in the same uh, place uh, it can be uh, a real cul-de-sac and I've often brought up on this channel where you need to be careful about the things you choose to paint you know a lot of people like for me I had a big advantage because I was a commercial artist so I know exactly what it means to make money by doing art and uh, pay your bills uh, but you know what comes with that is you're going to do what you're told and do what needs to be done uh, pardon me I'm going to sniffle here sorry about that <clears throat> and uh, and that's okay I mean you can still do a great job you can still be satisfied I did a lot of things I thought were really uh, excellent and awesome uh, you know including uh, you know uh, illustrations of Mount Rushmore you know not a subject I would ever choose but I've done some some very good uh, illustrations of Rushmore I was very proud of and uh, uh, you know definitely a lot of that stuff informed my process of painting because um, uh, you know where I worked we had to do designs that were eight colors so it's all about value and color is not always a luxury you know funny uh maybe you could, could you interpret this painting with eight colors you probably could you got what yellow purple orange red black green and red all right yeah this might make a great uh, screen print <laughs> anyway uh, so middle of the week video, a bit burbly. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be going live. I'm still dealing with like uh, some issues with my back and stuff. I'm able to work and paint, but uh, I'm just trying to get uh, uh, paintings done and I'm not pushing it. But I did uh, find time to make an extra video. And if you're uh, one of these lovely people that follows my channel, uh, Give me the like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do that. And uh, comments are very welcome. Uh, I enjoy them. If uh, you have the ability to support me in some other ways, I have a donation uh, thing on my website. Uh, you can buy the book or you can join the members area. Anyway, uh, or there's a thank you deluxe uh, thing underneath the video too. So if you have some wherewithal, you can support me in my uh, life as an artist. Anyway, until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. And God bless you and your family. Fight the
the power.